We've brought together a multidisciplinary team to discuss the latest in autoimmune diseases. We're joined by nurse Claudia Boglioni, physician Raffaele Greco, and patient advocate Suzanne Berlin. Thank you all so much for joining us today on EBMT TV. Claudia, perhaps we can start with you and you could get us started. Could you tell us how prevalent are autoimmune disorders in Europe today? In Europe, if you speak about general autoimmune disease, are about 4,000 over 100,000. If we speak about um, MS, multiple sclerosis, about 100, 110 uh, for every 100,000 in Europe, but it depends on what kind of region of Europe it, it changes. And if you think about south uh, of the world, like Asia, Africa, it uh, cuts off uh, 20 on uh, uh, 100,000. So it's, it's really different. Suzanne, this prevalence, what does that mean for patients? And, and where are some of the unmet needs that are existing? There is one unmet need, and that's our accessibility to um, efficient treatment. When you're getting sick, you're getting the diagnosis. Um, you have so many options. There's uh, 10 different kind of uh, medications and everyone's talking over your head. There is an MS team and they're talking about you and decide for you which is the best uh, medication for you. And um, well, I was 19 when I got it. So I was not really sure what was the best for me. And I wish that I would have had uh, an earlier saying in this and I would have gone for a stem cell transplant a lot earlier. Uh, Raffaella, maybe I could come to you now in terms of where the field is in terms of tackling this problem and, and communicating with patients. And are there any new therapies or clinical trials that are available that patients could be aware of? And I think it is important to mention now also for Susanna that uh, the field is rapidly evolving and that this is also a, a, for the patient an opportunity because now the transplant, the autologous transplant, uh, is recognized as standard indication for two diseases in autoimmune field. One is multiple sclerosis and uh, the place now is earlier as compared to the past. So the access is easy as compared to the past for that kind of patient. And also the other indication is scleroderma systemic sclerosis. And also uh, we are entering in a new era with new drugs, for example, CAR T cells, so other cellular therapy that are really promoting yeah. and I think this can be also another great opportunity for the patient. Uh, what we would like to do in EBNT and particularly with autoimmune disease working part is to be more and more in connection for the next future also with the patient community because we think that uh, outside of the common endpoint that we generally use as physicians and nurses in the trials it is important to underline the patient feelings about the treatment yeah. and uh, I think this is a, one of the first steps uh, to move also in your world and trying to be more connected for the next future. Claudia, let me come back to you. What are some of the ways that transplant nurses are innovating in the field to enhance the outcome for patients? The role of the nurse is, uh, is a key because it, it has to educate the patient to all the treatment because it's a life-threatening um, treatment so these kind of patients need to be guided and uh, transplant nurses uh, are formed to, to treat those. Suzanne, could you frame for us how patients should be guided through advanced treatment options uh, from your perspective as a patient advocate and, and what improvements would you like to see in the way that's being done? Well, information is key. That's uh, the most important thing that you have uh, information about the risks and also the benefits. And uh, it is a scary thing, like uh, Claudia said, it's a life threatening, potentially life threatening procedure and you go through it to get better and you need to have uh, the information on both risks and benefits all the time. And do advocacy groups play a part in that support of that as well? Yeah, uh, we're very active also on uh, Facebook groups and uh, giving information as much as we can. And I'm getting called up a lot, like uh, I have a friend who's uh, having MS, can you, could you please talk to her? And then you just uh, guide them through the options and uh, what they want to do. It. And I don't say that a stem cell transplant is the only option, because it's not. There's, a, like you said, there's coming so many more options as well. So you just need to see what is best for each person, each patient. 
Rafaela, let me come to you now and turn to the EBMT, Autoimmune Diseases Working Party itself. Can you tell us what role the Working Party plays in advancing research, clinical practices and also education in this field? I think that the Autoimmune Disease Working Party in DBNT is quite peculiar. Uh, it's uh, something unique I can see uh, also in this field worldwide because it's able to make a collaboration and fostering research, education and science across different specialties. We have healthcare providers from one side, so physicians, nurses, physiotherapists and other figures involved in the cure of the patient and on the other side the patient that are involved too. And uh, we are trying all together both from the transplant side and also from the disease specialist side. So it is really an opportunity to meet all together to do the best in terms of science and also decision making process for the management of patients affected by autoimmune disease. And I'd just like to finish with all of you by asking really, what's your sort of vision or hope for the future? If we meet in two years time or maybe in a decade, where would you like the field to be in terms of collaboration, but also the communication with the patient? What would it be? Raffaella, let me start with you and Claudia, and then I'll finish with you, Suzanne. I think the first step is also, as Suzanne is mentioning, the access for all the patients across the different countries, because now we have provided guidelines for the Europe and we would like to reach also the additional countries to be all aligned on that. And I think another important point is to be also on top of the new option, like the new cellular therapy, so to promote transplantation from one side, that is a concern dated experience now with good results also in long-term follow-up and on the other side have the possibility to make a research with these new kind of treatments that are promising and to proceed all together in one community to be uh, an entire group working together. Uh, nothing more than uh, what Raffaella said. Uh, we did, I personally don't have experience with uh, other therapies, uh, but um, I've been working in the bone marrow transplant in, since 2006, and I saw so many changes, and uh, I'm happy about it. So. And Suzanne, let me finish with you. Where, where would you like to see? things moving to? What's your hope for the future? Well, my personal hope would be a reimmunization, that it has something that um, can help you get the scars that you have. If stem cell transplant bring it to a stop, you're in remission, but you still have like uh, scars that you had for 15 years, many people with MS. Thank you all three of you for joining us today on EBMT TV. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.